If you're on the fence about soy, listen to this. The information about soy, is it good for us? Is it bad for us? But new evidence could change that. I don't even know if you'd call soy a food. Soy is safe for breast cancer patients. A man who drinks soy milk. I don't want to take that shit because I don't want to be more womanly. Hey, yeah, you go. Clearly, soy is a controversial topic. Hormonal imbalances, breast cancer, man boobs, GMOs, low testosterone, these are just a few of the things that you can find on the internet that give soy a bad rap. But what does the science actually have to say? Let's start with hormones. When it comes to hormonal imbalances, soy, you are not the culprit. Soy gets this bad reputation because it's thought to contain harmful estrogen-like compounds that can disrupt hormone balance, particularly in men. However, this is a misunderstanding. Soy contains phytoestrogens, which are plant-based compounds that mimic estrogen, but are actually 1,000 times weaker than the real hormone. Not surprisingly, this controversy was actually spawned by the dairy industry. And I promise that's not just some crazy vegan conspiracy theory. It's actually well known that the dairy industry started a misinformation campaign about soy in the 1990s because soy milk started chipping away at their profits. Their campaign clearly worked because many people still fear soy. However, the scientific consensus is quite clear. Research, such as this 2016 study, has proven that phytoestrogens should not be equated with the hormone estrogen. If anything, the opposite of this myth is true. Real animal estrogen is found in cow's milk, and unlike plant phytoestrogens, these hormones actually do mimic human estrogen in our bodies. That's because they originate from an animal. According to a German study, the average person consumes 80% of ingested progesterone and a staggering 60 to 70% of ingested estrogen from dairy products. Not to mention the other natural sex steroids that are also found in meat, dairy, and eggs. Exposure to these have a substantial and largely unexplored impact on human health and development. Okay, so if soy doesn't actually affect your hormones like animal products do, then we have to ask ourselves about one of the biggest claims that a lot of men make. Soy will lower my testosterone and give me man boots. There's only been one alleged case of feminizing effects that occurred from eating soy. In 2008, a 60-year-old man was referred to an endocrinology clinic for evaluation of bilateral gynecomastia, more commonly known as man boobs. On further review, doctors noted that he had no ill health effects, including no changes in testicular size, muscle mass, or strength, and all scans and tests came back as normal. In other words, the dude was totally fine. However, the doctors were perplexed by the normal findings, so they interviewed him and he casually noted his daily intake of three quarts of soy milk per day. That's three quarters of a gallon. While the publication does not note the type of soy milk that he was drinking, if he was drinking sweetened soy milk, then he would be drinking around 1,500 calories per day. If guys drink that many calories on top of their regular diet, then yeah, soy milk might cause you to gain so much weight that you actually grow man boobs. Joking aside, after he stopped drinking soy milk, his breast tenderness resolved and his estrogen levels returned to normal. But that's just a single inconclusive case published in the scientific literature that has never been replicated. So no, soy consumption does not impact testosterone levels and definitely will not give you man boobs. Oh, you got me. In fact, a 2010 meta-analysis evaluated data from 15 different placebo-controlled trials of soy foods, soy protein, or isoflavone supplements. The studies measured several indicators of testosterone levels, including total testosterone, free testosterone, and sex hormone binding globulin. The researchers concluded that the 15 studies demonstrated no effects from soy consumption on men's testosterone levels, estrogen levels, or sperm quality, and several subsequent studies studies, such as a 2011 study from Germany, a 2012 study from Japan, and a 2017 study in the United Kingdom, have reached the same conclusion. 
the consumption of phytoestrogens from soy foods have no negative effects on male or female physiology. There's truly zero evidence that men who consume soy should start shopping for bras. And not to mention, soy is a fantastic protein source which is beneficial for building lean muscle. And for what it's worth, I've been eating on average about half a pound of soy per day for the last eight years. I think my testosterone levels are just fine. So if soy doesn't affect hormones and it doesn't feminize men, what about the claim that eating soy increases your risk of breast cancer? Well, this is a false belief with no scientific backing that even some doctors still perpetuate. And not only is it completely wrong, but it actually distracts you from the real danger. Let me explain. It is true that consuming estrogen increases your risk of breast cancer, which is why there has long been concern that the phytoestrogens in soy would do the same. But remember, real estrogen and phytoestrogens are not the same. In Asian countries where soy is a dietary staple, the prevalence of breast cancer is much lower than in the United States. This paradox fueled hundreds of scientific studies which all reached the same conclusion. Without a shadow of a doubt, soy consumption does not increase breast cancer risk. In fact, the research suggests that soy intake actually helps to protect against initial breast cancer development, breast cancer recurrence, and breast cancer mortality. A 2008 review by researchers at the Keck School of Medicine showed that women who consume one cup, which is 237 milliliters of soy milk per day, or half a cup of tofu per day, which is equivalent to 100 grams, had a 30% lower risk of developing breast cancer versus women who avoid soy. Soy has also been shown in many studies to reduce the risk of reoccurrence in breast cancer survivors. A recent study followed over 6,000 survivors for nearly a decade and found that the women who consumed the most soy had a 21% lower risk of all-cause mortality compared with low soy consumers. The study also found that women with a high genetic risk of developing breast cancer may actually benefit the most from eating soy. Plus, the anti-cancer benefits of soy extend far beyond breast cancer. Soy consumption has also been linked to decreased risk of prostate, lung, stomach, and colorectal cancers. Not to mention, soy is also great for your heart. It lowers your blood pressure and LDL cholesterol. But all of this confusion about soy has distracted us from the real cancer threat, which is eating meat. In the NIH AARP Diet and Health Study, researchers followed over 194,000 postmenopausal women for over a decade and found that meat intake was associated with a 27% higher risk of breast cancer. No matter how you slice it, the scientific consensus clearly states that soy is healthy and meat is not. Basically, the only reason that you should avoid soy is if you have a soy allergy. And if that's the case, then there are plenty of other high quality plant proteins that you can choose from. Now you might be thinking, okay, fine, maybe soy isn't as bad as I thought, but isn't all soy genetically modified? Yes, in fact, a whopping 94% of soy is genetically modified, but of that 94%, 98% of it is used as animal feed. That means that the vast majority of genetically modified soy is actually used to feed chickens, pigs, and cows, which are then consumed by omnivores who worry about eating GMO soy directly. As a vegan, it's actually super simple to consciously avoid genetically modified soy. All you have to do is look for the USDA organic or non-GMO verified label on your soy products. So consider these soy myths busted. Soy won't affect your hormones, it won't feminize men, it won't increase your risk of breast cancer, and you really don't have to worry about it being genetically modified. Above all, soy is a fantastic addition to any healthy plant-based diet. So I hope this video helped to clear some things up, and if you got any value from today, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please let me know in the comments what myth you want me to bust next, and I'll see you in the next one.